Chapter 1 About the Saint You are listening at FameTV.info What kind of being is a saint? A wanderer from the wilderness asked about what it meant to be a saint, she is the purest woman in the world who embodies the virtues of peace, love and the willingness to sacrifice, replied a shepherd boy in a barren yard who could refuse such a great proposition, saint. Blessed Person Holy Mother, when there is a saint on earth, there is hope, Canarianism Book 14, verse 1.7 Drip Drip, dew drops fell from white petals The white lily was a symbolic flower of Canarianism. Thus, fragrant white lilies could be found at temples and places where the Canarian people lived. Even this prayer room was filled with white lilies. A statue of the Canarian goddess stood in the midst of the decorations made of white lilies and shellfish. Sunshine seeped through the narrow window of the room. A speck of dust that floated near the statue glistened like gold under the sunlight. The slow movement of the sunshine as the day goes on was calming in the silence. Within the shadow cast by the statue of the benevolent goddess, there was a woman kneeling, goddess. The woman called out to the goddess whom she believed in. However, just like always, it was the same. The terrible silence was like an iron wall that could not be broken through by any means, peace be with you. The woman knew better than anyone but simply could not avert her gaze from the statue. This was the only thing she could do, after all, she was the vassal of the goddess. She kneeled, unmoving as she continued to pray. She removed the veil that was covering her face, the woman blinked. Her eyelashes looked like golden threads. A pair of sky-blue eyes looked up towards the statue. The color of her eyes matched well with her long hair that looked like golden terry, note. Terry, means, honey skein. It is also known as Korean court cake, a dessert and variation of dragon's beard candy. With a slender figure and fair skin, she was beautiful. Her small, white face looked no different than the white lilies that were decorated around the room. After a while, she lowered her gaze from staring at the statue, beautiful blonde hair that looked like woven golden thread, blue eyes that resembled sapphire gems, even the luxurious and intricately decorated shoulder pads that only four people in the nation were given, these three points were clear proof of who the woman was, Nania. The 48th saint, a baby who burst into tears alone under a shining star on a moonless and dark night. With a great willingness to sacrifice, she was born to be the saint who will take away the sufferings of all the beings on this earth. A month had passed since then, and Nania's role had been determined without a shadow of a doubt, she was a product of benevolence and a symbol of sacrifice. Nania's final step in fulfilling her duties as a saint would prove to be different than her predecessors. For other Canarian saints, the beginning and final steps were always the same the first step was to be acknowledged as a saint in the temple. Within the Perchin Empire was a temple built by a saint who lit the torch of the temple when the world was in turmoil and darkness. All saint candidates were raised in the temple until they had fulfilled the requirements. What does it mean to be a saint? Nania grew up listening to the same words that were repeated all her life at the temple. She was obedient to the Holy Father and the other believers who had raised her under the arms of the goddess. Sacrifice as a saint was always natural and of the goddess will, Caner's Day. It was an event that is celebrated over a course of three days. The celebration this year will be its 996th anniversary, commemorating the day when the goddess first descended to this chaotic land. Nania would be making her debut as the saint in the public's eye, she blessed people with a benevolent smile. The main day of the Caner's Day celebration would be on the third day. The last day. At midnight on the day the goddess first ascended, Nania was on the altar of the temple, people did not know that the existence of a saint is to be a sacrifice, they only knew that being a saint is to have the virtue of sacrifice. Your sole existence is to be a sacrifice, when the succession orders were issued, two high priests flanked Nania on both sides to forcibly draw out her power. Standing at the altar, Nania looked around at the people below. Amongst the crowd, there were countless noble men, including the emperor of Pirchen and the kings from different countries, the commoners did not know that being a saint was to be wholly dedicated to the goddess. Only those of higher status were more aware of the circumstances that it was largely assumed that watching the end of a saint would be the closest thing to the goddess.
The spots from where they stood were arranged in the order of the largeness of the donation they had given to the church. Goddess, we offer you flowers as a sacrifice. Instead, the high priests began to forcibly draw out Nania's power. Nania struggled as the pain assaulted her. She felt her bones and body breaking as the priests repetitively hit and cut her skin with a knife. As she screamed in agony, there was a bright and brilliant light. A man exclaimed loudly in wonderment of the beautiful light, eventually, drained of strength, Nania collapsed to her knees. Her body leaned sideways and her breathing was faint. One of the new priests approached her and confirmed that she had exhausted her all of her strength. There is not a shred of power left, upon the priest's report to the emperor, the great festival was ended and the saint's breath was cut off, her cold, lifeless body was drained out at the altar. Eventually, it would become ashes and be used for the temple's purposes. That was the last of the saint, the emperor and distinguished guests from different countries turned around. After the long ritual was done, it was time to leave. However, their steps stopped before they crossed the threshold. Wow! The emperor frowned upon the new priest's exclamation. Then everyone's faces turned red with shock, the saint, who was supposed to be dead, rose from the altar and wobbled, Nania staggered again and again but straightened up and continued walking towards them every time. There was a deafening silence, the saint was still alive, asterisk 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 Nania was locked up in the spire of the temple under the empire's commands. There was a discussion within the temple of what action was to be taken but they were silently hoping that Nania would pass away before a decision was made. To their disappointment, Nania was still breathing when they checked on her later that I should have died then, how should a person feel upon finding out that the way they were to be sacrificed was set I understand Nania replied with a face as serene as ever when a priest relayed the whole situation to her, then, as soon as the priest left, the smile disappeared from her face, should I be relieved or sad that I can't remember very well, Nania looked down at her pale hands. I am alive but I don't feel the same as before that I'm sure that there's something different with my body after exhausting it of all my strength for that ritual. I've been locked up in this room every sleeping and waking moment. I'm still feeling tired even though it is a normal day but it is better to stay awake for as much as I can, Nania was plagued with nightmares of the day she was sacrificed every night. The nobles who came to watch applauded her death with their blood. Red eyes, the memory of suffering and witnessing her death will never be erased. It was forever imprinted in the mind and body what sin did I commit to deserve this that I'd done my best in life under the name of the goddess. Proudly and with unwavering loyalty, I'd practiced all of the goddess teachings that of all the saints sacrificed in the past, only I have survived. Perhaps it was my sin to survive that ritual that I wonder what happened now, Nania curled up against the wall. She was now an ordinary person and no longer a saint. Even so, it was also a problem since she was locked away in the spire, there was no direct access to Nania. She has been cut off from the outside world as well, furthermore, news of the nature of Nania's sacrificial ritual has spread like wildfire throughout the empire since it was not only watched by the people of the temple but by the emperor himself and the distinguished guests from the other countries, why am I alive? Even Nania was full of suspicion. She tugged at a lock of hair and checked on the ends. The tips of her hair which were once vibrant golden color have turned white like the tail of a weasel, Nania had always thought that pure white, which spreads farther than black darkness, was a closer color to death, the embrace of the goddess meant death, perhaps that was why the goddess was always bathed in white light. Listen to the full novel at fametv.info, direct link in the description.